everybody and welcome to this A to Z stitch with me. I am currently still working on the raccoon cabin which is the first part of the frosty forest series that is made by Country Cottage Needleworks. Information about fabric, how I got to floss everything I talk about in my two first episodes. It is stitched on a th 32 count Belfast linen in pearl grey, which uh, really makes, I really like how the white shows on this uh, fabric. So it's a nice fabric if you're going to do a lot of white and want it to pop. So today I think actually I will start by not doing the white and do some green and hopefully finish this tree and do some brown stitching. And where is my starting point on my hair? I just had to find my end on the bobbin. <laughs> it's not always easy to find. So I'm just pulling out on one leg. This is pre-cut. I use a ruler and pre-cut to double lengths usually. And if I'm only using one strand, I, will us I usually pull one length, cut it in half and put the other half around this uh, hole. So I can use that later. Or another time. Um, so yeah, so I usually always pre-cut in double lengths of what I need because I love to use the loop method when I start stitching. So let's see. Working from, it's almost difficult to, to work downwards now with the co this color since I did work upwards <laughs> previously. So yeah. Okay. Let's. You know what? I'm gonna work from bottom up. So that means I'm do will do my stitches top top. Just because I right now I'm very tired. It's very late. Uh, but I want to stitch on this project because I want to try and get it finished in May. So I started totally wrong with that one. What did I do? Did I? I don't. No, I'm in the correct spot. I don't know what happened there. I think maybe the loop didn't pull properly true. Yeah. There, that's better. I think the loop didn't go quite through or I pierced the loop when I tried to go back down. Something did happen, but I fixed it. So, I hope you are having a nice Friday. Maybe you are joining Friday of the Grid with their uh, Friday stitching. And yeah, this will maybe be a very quiet episode because <laughs> I feel I feel so tired right now. Uh, I 
Okay, actually I will go this way and do these stitches to make the um, again floss lay correctly. I'm sorry about that. I have some noises I make when I am thinking and right now I'm thinking how I want to do this because uh, going upwards on this side wasn't as easy as the other side it's actually much harder to get the floss to lay correct and stuff like that so I am I think I have to use my half stitches. To make things look okay. It's not too bad doing it that way. Can't always do it the most efficient way even though that is actually what I'm sometimes use the longest time on on stitching, especially like this where there's motifs. I use so long time deciding what color to do and what, when to do what color in what order and how to stitch them. That is the most efficient way, and I'm just I end up thinking too much. Um. And I think also that's why I love, love parking on full coverage projects because then I have like a, if I, if I take myself in, in the fact that I'm thinking too mu much, I'm like, I always start in the top left corner, at least so far I have, or I have turned my project around to do that. And, um... Do I have a knot box back here? I don't hope so. Yes, I do. I have a knot at the back of my fabric. Uh, try and see if I can twist it around this way. Oh, the opposite way of what I normally do. And there you can see my knot. Go back there, fixed. Oh, that much work for that little knot. And try and get back to where I was. my pillow and yeah ready to start the stitching again ah. of course now the whole floss is knotted up it didn't like it didn't like me at all what I did I have no clue what I was talking about before the knot. I know I talked about Friday. Yeah, the direction I'm stitching and me thinking too much and uh, loving full coverage because and parking because uh, I always start in the top left corner. And I usually have a rule that if I start thinking too much, then I always stitch The, the stitch that is most to the top left and in that order top left or almost always top left and that helps immensely when I can't decide what to do 
And actually, I have started trying diagonal parking, and that is even more enjoyable. I tried uh, Jessie Marie's uh, stairway diagonal parking, and I have tried like pure diagonal parking, more like blitz stitch. Yeah, actually, more like blitz stitch. Uh, Karen the Needlebug does a lot of diagonal parking and shows videos about that. And she she only do her um, her one diagonal. She never parks in any other diagonals, and she does row by row in the diagonals. Those ten stitches before going down to the next one. I'm I'm more like Brian in that way because I um, if I have stitches over the the stitch stitches over in the diagonal with the color I am currently doing. I will stitch those stitches. And um, as long as there are stitches over, uh, since I stitch top down, I always like to I don't like to have stitches underneath my stitches. So my my needle if this was the top part, it always comes up with one or less, one or two legs at the maximum when going up and going down where there is uh, like a bunch of legs right here. And this is now here, so when I come to this stitch, I will go up where there is like two legs and down where there is two legs and then this stitch will come up where there's three legs and down three legs and the holes are just already very filled up and I don't like that. So working top down is, uh, I really love that. I love how my stitches looks, uh, really neat. But I, but I do jump, I, I do the stitches if there is a stitch underneath um, that is already done on the color, I will go down the other rows in the diagonal. I also will deviate a, just a tiny bit from the diagonal. Um, if it's at the top of the diagonal, I will do like all the stitches that is there. Uh, as long as it's not a color that goes over three or four blocks of color at the top, um, but um, if it's like two or three more stitches of that color, or actually ten, in that I if, if, like in the next diagonal, I will do those stitches with that color from the top, and I will continue doing that un until I don't have stitches or over. That is done and sometimes I will not do some of this like one or two of the stitches um, if uh, it's like just that one stitch of a color in that diagonal and then it shows up in the next diagonal and there is a bunch of stitches and that is only on the edge of the diagonal from the diagonal I am currently working on to the next and I will actually park as far as two diagonals away sometimes. Um, it sounds like that's pretty far, uh, but travel-wise from, from the stitch, if it's a stitch right at the edge of the diagonal, then jumping to not the next diagonal I'm supposed to do, but the one after that isn't... isn't really that um, hard to do. And I, of course, made a mistake. Whip. Now you can see me try and take out the pin stitch. I was lucky. Um, so, so yeah, I really love diagonal stitching and I will maybe do more um, types of pattern that way but I will only do 
the ones that are very confetti heavy because the ones that isn't confetti heavy uh, diagonal stitching isn't um, isn't that good for me and how I like to stitch then I instead use my way of parking that I have made myself that I have seen no one else do um, because that is just better with big blocks of color because if it's big blocks of color, I'm not always a very big fan of um, how to explain that one. I'm not a big fan of um, breaking them up, those big blocks of color. Unless they're like really, really big, then I do break them off with diagonal stitching. But like with my lady and the tiger that has big blocks that goes very much downwards, that means I would do a diagonal and I would do like I could do that stitch until the diagonal ended and then park it down here and then wait for the next diagonal to continue doing these stitches instead of just doing those stitches all the way down all the time and and uh, yeah not and my um not change the floss so much on my needle basically I actually think I will be doing this one because this is a better way of it's a better stitch to start with after I finish there just with how the legs would be there is so I went the opposite way back from bottom and the top just so when I was doing this stitch it would be um, this wouldn't get a prolonged leg and as long they are a tiny bit different in how they looks I can see it but not much and especially if I do the most important part or doing like these two the exact same way or else I can see it if they're if they're right beside each other there isn't like a huge difference at least in my eyes um, so yeah And that, this stitch means we're actually done with the boat of the trees. That's fun. There I did what I shouldn't have done, went up in this hole instead of here and cut it because I had to like try and poke down that that little end that did show up I did see. But it's all fixed, it's still pinned, no problem. Got it correct the second time I did those stitches. <sighs> Zoom you out. What to do now? You're probably shouting at me. Oh, do this or do that or something, something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, your past. I can't really hear what you are saying now in my future. <sighs> I think maybe maybe I should do like this 
this part brown right here and do those stitches as far down as I can and then maybe jump over and start on more on the house yeah get those part of blouses away uh, can be a good thing get like a new start and it's fairly easy to stitch since it's just straight down in a row so I have my little book with a tag beside me last time we did the first question in the curiosity tag and now I was thinking doing the second question number two do you prefer prefer framing cushing 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 I can't read my own writing or wall hanging for finish um, I actually I have done a lot of framing I don't necessarily know if I like doing framing but I like the pictures and stuff being framed to hang on the wall um, I also like pillow finishes in all honesty and like small ornaments and those finishes I love doing uh, one of my favorites is actually making coasters um, that has become one of my favorites it's fun doing the pin cushions and uh, the biscornius when you do the whip stitch to to put the pieces together that is also fun so I, I think I like most of them uh, my Christmas calendar I made into a wall hanging that looks really really nice how I made it without having to sew um, Sometimes sewing is fun, sometimes I don't like sewing as much. It depends on my mood. I'm gonna park this right here. Yeah, it actually really depends. Depends what it is, how, if like, if I see a fabric that I think it's perfect for a pattern, I will do like one over one stitching or just live with having half an inch, an inch of a border all around and not like worry about what I'm going to do with it and rather think that either I find a frame where I can like more just stick the piece in there as a photograph or do like a pillow wall hanging something like that but I usually don't finish that's my biggest problem in all honesty I usually don't finish <laughs> Um, I'm not really big at finishing. Don't know why. It just the fun part for me is stitching. So yeah, I think I'm going to do this white one also. Finish the belly of the raccoon. Maybe do everything I wasn't supposed to, like stitch the raccoon. <laughs> I had a plan of finishing the house before the raccoon and the fence and stuff like that, but um, I like stitching on the raccoon. Because it's everywhere, it's like between one to five stitches in a row of one color, and that's 
so easy to count and keep track of by just seeing like these big blocks of snow it's a little bit harder sometimes especially like over here where I had to count and be really careful about where I did the stitches or not so the tail would appear so maybe I should like do the tail at least on this side so it's easier to do the rest of the snow but at the same time it isn't because I have to do the fence maybe do the tail and the fence maybe maybe I'm this always happens when I'm tired I get very indecisive I don't know what to do I don't I'm like oh should I do this nah. should I do this yeah oh this will be fun yeah uh, I'm just I can't decide it's probably going to be a shorter one but that's fine because the other ones have been uh, very lengthy actually so I should have railroaded the stitches I'm gonna regret regret this later not railroading that's those stitches and now I don't care so I'm like yeah I'm just gonna finish this floss off and call it a day on this one let me see Next question on the tag is, do you have a favorite designer? Uh, I actually don't know if I can say yes to that because I love so, so many. I have, I think I have most Heaven and Earth designs patterns, but I don't know if I can call them like designers because they use different artists and that's why there's so big variety in what I have. So it's easy to get a lot of stitches because of that. Um, actually, I think I'm going to pull out my pecan pie. Do some brown stitches on the raccoon. Just because I can. Um... Another designer I have a lot of patterns from, but that is also because she has made so many free patterns. You can get them from her uh, Facebook page, Maria Brovko. Uh, she is also known as Cute Patterns by Maria on Etsy. Uh, I really like her patterns. Mm. I love most of the Krauss factory one because there's so many like um what am I going to call it um fandom stitches that you usually don't get elsewhere and they're easy to do and yeah so no I, I don't think I have a favorite designer but in reality if I were going to say one I think I would say Joan Elliott because she has such a big diversity in what she is doing she's doing like fancy ladies she has done those um, more renaissance ladies the reader, the stitcher. Um, she also has like animals. She has more children like. She has uh, a book that is about um, quotes and stuff like that. Um, sayings. I think it's something with sayings. She has her own book that is like for women in cross stitching. Um, she has some, some that is real funny and some that is cuter 
and she has like some lovely dragons she has one where there is like a fairy riding a dragon and that that pattern is really really good i love that one that is one on my wish list to start because i actually have the pattern so i'm all I'm so afraid that I didn't secure it good enough, so I'm just going to do one extra pin on the pin stitch. And then I think I actually want to change. Do I want to change colors? Just like this lighter brown in his tail? Lighter brown or darker brown in his tail? Mm. I actually think I will go lighter brown. So yeah, I, th I think maybe Joan Elliott, she has like those Native American designs, um, the geishas, more oriental patterns. Um, so yeah, because of the diversity she has, it's like the only thing missing is full coverage pieces, but some of her, like the ladies and stuff, uh, like the two Cinderella's I'm doing, um, they are heavily stitched where there is stitches, so it's almost like a semi full coverage project. So, yeah, I think I would have to say Joan Elliott. And in the beginning, I didn't like how the faces of Joan Elliot that she did to the ladies and such. Because I just looked at the picture, but when I have done my Cinderella in rags and finished her face, I it looks so much better stitched up in real life than it does on the mock-up. Or like a picture that other ones have done so that's nice um, let me see yeah I don't think I have more to say there there's most likely a bunch of people that I haven't said or mentioned or and in a way, Maria Brovko and Mandrink's designs and so on, I really love those also. So in a way, you could say the Russian designers. Russian, I think they're Russian or Ukrainian or around, around that area in, in the world. So yeah. Yep, I like this stripy pattern on his tail on the raccoon. Um, I actually don't want to, it is then stitching down here, but it's, there is at least one white stitch and I don't think I want to do that one quite yet.
auch. That was at least some more stitching in the tail. So yeah, um, I'm like, I like so much different things and also a lot of the Country Cottage Needleworks designs, uh, the series, there is a lot of those I like. Um, ink circles, like more geometric designs. Glendon Place have a lot of good ones. There's so many good designers. I I just really can't say one favorite designer. It's impossible. So, so yeah. That's that. And with that, I think I'm going to zoom you out and this will be a tiny bit uh, shorter than the rest. This is actually the length I was originally intending having my stitch with me. And I always seems to, when it's around like 25 minutes, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go and do this. And then suddenly we are at 40, 45 minutes, 50 minutes. Yeah, you name it. But we're we're doing some good progress right now. We got some more work on the house. We did finish both of the trees. And that I finished last time, that I finished now, and now the table. And this part in his head that is like right beside his eyes. So, yeah, looking good. Uh, love it so far. This is the same time as uh, the one for three episodes ago. Something like that. It's the same day. That's why I'm so tired. I've done four videos in one sit down. And it's late. So. I'm going to say bye for now and um, see you next Friday. Hope you are having some good stitchy time, happy stitching and hope you are getting a good weekend. So goodbye.